by this time next year, a tibar of yam will be 100 naira. <laughs> a tibar of Irish potato will be 10 naira. A bag of rice will be 3,000 naira. And a kilogram of beef meat will be 260 naira. These are not just prayers. This is going to happen by this time next year. And I will tell you how. Now, irrespective of who you are, your political affiliation, your religious inclination, your education background, whatever it is you do, we all have one thing in common, and that is food. So it is important that we understand what are the factors responsible for the price of food today so that together we can crash the price of food. The three factors responsible for the prices of food today are you, the consumer, us, the farmers, and the environment. As a consumer, you have yearnings. There are things you care about about your food. One, you want to know that your food is available, that your food is consistent. You don't only want to eat maize during rainy season. You want to eat maize even during dry season. You want to know that the price of your tomatoes will be constant throughout the year. You want to know that your food is accessible. You want to ensure that your food is affordable. We all want to be sure that our food is tasty. And maybe for a few of us, we want to know that our food is healthy. For us, the farmers, we want access to equipment. We want to ensure that we have labor to grow our farms. Unfortunately, the youths of today are not interested in agriculture. We want to have free access to fertilizer. Much more than that, we want to know that after producing the crops, that we can transport our crops from the farms to the market, because today our roads have become nothing but death traps. We want to know that there is a market willing to accept what we are producing. We want to know that our crops have a long shelf life. Today, a truckload of cassava costs about 200,000 naira. Three days after harvest, if the farmer is unable to process it or unable to sell it to a processor, that same truckload of cassava will cost less than 10,000 naira. We want to know that we have storage facilities for our produce. We want banks that will give us money. Unfortunately, because agriculture is so unpredictable, banks are unwilling to give farmers loans and the almighty weather. We want to have the power to control nature. And for the environment, there is the greenhouse effect that the world is clamoring about. There is the soil degradation. There is the water conservation. To understand what this means, this is the soil profile of Nigeria as at 1986. You would realize on the screen that as at 1986, we had 0% of very productive soil. We had 5.52% of productive soil, and we had just 31.75% of medium productive soil, which means as at 1986, over 50% of our soil was not fertile for growing. Somebody would ask, we have so much land that has never been used for anything. How come these lands were already bad for growing? We all have machines. We have tractors that gives us carbon monoxide. There is deforestation and bush burning that releases carbon monoxide. This carbon monoxide would react with water during rainfall to form bicarbonate acid that gives rise to what you call acidic rain. This acidic rain spoils the soil integrity and degrades the soil fertility. This was 1986. What do you think the soil would be today? Don't think too far. This was released last week by the Nigeria Meteorological Society Agency. From the map to the left, that shows the annual rainfall. In the year 2017, only Ikeja in Lagos, Nigeria experienced normal rainfall. Every other part of Nigeria either had too little or 
too much. To the right, you have the soil moisture index of Nigeria. As of today, only Lagos, Bini, and Wari has the right soil for growing. If everything continues this way, what is the future we have to look forward to? For the farmer, we will soon start experiencing lower and lower produce. Our yields will go down. We will have low income, and eventually, as farmers, we will be bankrupt. In Nigeria, over 60% of us are farmers. When this happens to us, on the flip side, the consumer would experience higher cost of living. Because you want to eat whatever you get, you no longer care about healthy food. This will result in health decline and gradually death. Nigeria as a nation would move from a developing nation to an underdeveloped nation. Nigeria is part of the world. We already have the global warming coming up. This is leading to water depletion. Agriculture is going downhill. Health is going downhill. Death is on the horizon. Today, Nigeria stands as the seventh most populous nation in the world. By the year 2050, we will be the third most populous nation in the world. If we can't feed ourselves today, how do we feed ourselves then? FAO has already predicted that by the year 2018, 16 states in Nigeria, including the FCT, is going to suffer from famine. Where do we go from here? What am I doing differently to ensure that by this time next year, a tuber of yam will be 100 naira? We are bringing up a synergy where us, the farmers, you, the consumers, would have to harmonize with the environment to ensure whatever activity you partake in must be healthy for the farmer, the consumer, and the environment. Thus, the farmer and the consumer, we are both humans. So we must come together as the human race to combine with nature to form a new ecosystem. Today, agriculture uses 70% of the world's clean water. We, the agriculturists, we are responsible for 30% greenhouse emission. We use the most energy in the world. Should we do away with that agriculture? No, that's not possible. Because agriculture is also fundamental to our survival. So all I needed to do was rethink how can we do agriculture differently. Today, we are creating farms where the plants are able to send test messages to the owner of the farm, telling the owner of the farm what they need per time. The plants and the animals are able to send emails to the farmers, telling them <laughs> what they are going through. We are taking it to the next level where, when we have a farm, we know that the basic needs of plants, you have nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So we put the nutrient in three different tanks. Once the plant realizes the level of nitrogen in itself is going down, it sends a message through its plant sensor to the owner of the farm. At the same time, sends a message to the nitrogen tank. The tank is able to release the exact amount of nitrogen that that plant requires to survive. With this, we have also been able to solve the problem of labor. Now, you have 10 acres of land, you just need two people. Youth might say no to hoes and cutlasses, but nobody would say no to a remote-controlled farm. <laughs> Next, we have brought about soilless agriculture. Before now, we all are used to growing plants in the soil, but we are creating a system where you can grow your plants without soil. We have hydroponics, aquaponics, and aeroponics. What is hydroponics? Grain of plants inside water. This is our regular disposable cup. This is onions. Put your water, normal water inside your cup, place an onion bulb over it, and you start growing your onions in your houses. As simple as ABC. This is a system created for growing plants. This is an hydroponic system. 
Here we have the parts. How does it work? Plants do not require soil to grow. Plants require nutrients. If they needed soil to grow, you would not need fertilizer in your farm. You would not need fertilizers in your farm. So we understand that the function of soil in plant is just to act as a support system. Hence, we created a support system. To get the nutrients into the system, we have a container that would hold the nutrient, dissolve it inside water. To get the water to go through the system, we have a submersible pumping machine like the one used in your aquarium. We put it in the bucket, and like that, your system is done. There is a timer to control the feeding of your plants. As humans, you don't eat every day. Our plants, too, are not glutens. They don't eat every time. From this little system, covering less than one and a half meter space in length and less than one meter space in diameter, I can grow 90 plants from this space. If I take it 10 steps, I can grow 900 plants from this place. You have an empty room you are not using. You have an empty garage. You are wasting resources. Turn that your lawn into a growing space. On the screen, that is a farm in a badon where we are growing yam in the air. No soil needed. Somebody would ask, why grow soilless? One, with soilless growing, we are able to optimize space. If you have an acre of land or a plot of land and you decide to go 10, 10 layers up, your one plot of land will give you the worth of 10 plots. You go 20 layers up, the same plot of land gives you the worth of 20 plots. Two, because the system, you are able to feed the plant when you want and stop the feeding when you want, it means you can grow any time of the year. You are not season dependent. Whatever you did not grow on this system is not going to grow. So you have no need for herbicides. You have no need for insecticide, fungicide, and all of the other sides you can think of. Here you have the same yam farm two months later harvesting to show the length of how the yam can go. Same farm two months later. Another advantage is because of the system of farming, the farmer is able to use lesser amount of fertilizer as compared to normal soil farming. When you plant in the soil, for example, on a plot of land, you need about 50 kilograms of fertilizer to start your farm. Two, three months down the line in the farm, you have to come back and reapply fertilizer because rain may have fallen and washed off part of the fertilizer or pushed it too deep into the ground that the plant no longer can assess it. So you have to apply again another 50 kilograms, which means in the planting season on the plot of land, you spent approximately 100 kilograms of fertilizer. With this system, you just need 800 grams. 800 grams, as opposed to a hundred kilogram to plant your system from planting to harvest. This system also ensures that your harvest period is faster. If you want to grow tomatoes in the soil, it will take you three months. With this system, it takes you just one month. You want to grow your wheat grass in the soil, it takes you about three to four months. With this system, it takes seven days. And this is another farm currently supplying one of the top stores in Lagos, a tomatoes farm in a place called Dararomiake after Ikberu in Shagamu. Tomatoes being grown in the air. In addition to this, we also understand that another big issue for us farmers is seed. So we are collaborating presently, and hopefully by next year, we'll be able to build our own tissue culture labs where we can clean our seeds so that farmers have access to clean seeds all year round. We also understand that for us farmers, getting equipment is a big issue. So we are working currently with a group of companies abroad who are going to come in and bring their equipment and tractors down to Nigeria. However, the farmers are not expected to buy these tractors from these companies. 
Instead, they are going to rent these tractors while these companies manage the tractors on their own. However, the farmers are not going to pay in cash for renting the tractors. Instead, they are going to pay in produce. Thus, the owners of these companies are much more invested in the farm because they understand if the farmer fails, they fail. With this, the insurance companies now are willing to come aboard, not just to insure the farms, but to insure the tractors. And now the banking sectors are waiting that, yes, now we can give farmers loan. With all of these, food will soon become available, accessible, consistent, affordable, and healthy. Thank you. In all of these, we did not sacrifice palatability for production. We are also ensuring we are working on packaging and branding. And for the environment, with our system of growing, water is conserved, our lands are preserved, and the air is fresher. What is the bold idea? Presently in Wasimi Soro in Ogun State, we are creating a small city. On one part of the city, we have the consumer farmer environment area, and on the flip side, we are creating in the city a smart traffic routing system, we are creating a smart security service, we are creating a smart public service such that our waste is recycled. We are ensuring that there is renewable energy. In the same place, we are also working to ensure that there is 24 hours light and 24 hours internet service. And yes, it is still a farm. We are ensuring that there is good social infrastructure. We are bringing in schools and hospitals. The vision is by the year 2022, our smart city will be totally financially independent of its environment, yet generating so much or contributing so much to the national GDP. All of this is going to be centralized on, will be connected via what you call the information communication technology, via the IoT, Internet of Things. We are not unaware of the regular farmers' headsmen clashes. Hence, we have developed a further system to grow grass for the herdsmen. Now we can grow the grass of herdsmen in just seven days for their cows. You have goat and sheep, we grow it in five days. You have rabbits, we grow it in four days. You have poultry, we grow it in three days. This is a farm set up for someone in the north. Complete for that system, we have been able to build ranches for the animals where they bring their animals to their feeding area and you have the cows eating the grasses. So that, those are the further grasses grown for them, which is way healthier than what they are doing, that they have to move them from one place to another. We have also tried educating people to bring people to appreciate and understand what we are doing. We've had people from different parastatas to see what we are doing on the farm. We've brought students from different universities to appreciate the technology that we are bringing on board. This is one of our partner tissue culture lab, where we do some of our work here in Nigeria. And this is the farm when we just finished construction. <laughs> By this time next year, a tuber of yam will be 100 naira. Yeah. A tuber of Irish potato will be 10 naira. And a kilogram of beef meat will go for 260 naira. How is all of this possible? we are automating processes. We have been able to bring about new generation of farms that youths are interested in. Farms with 24 hours light, 24 hours internet service, where the CO2 emission is reduced to the barest minimum. You don't, cut down, you don't cut down, you don't burn down your houses to cook your food. So we should not burn the planet in the name of feeding it. Once in a lifetime, you either need a policeman, a lawyer, or a doctor. But every day of your life, you need a farmer. So to secure the future, invest in agriculture, embrace a farmer, be pro-environment. Thank you. <laughs>